Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. Today, we are talking five common moisturizer mistakes that could be impacting the results you see from your skincare routine. Here on the channel, I am passionate about helping everyone out there to choose the right products for their individual skin's needs. But I wanna take this a step further. Share some of the mistakes that I've made in the past so that you guys can learn from them. Know how to layer, pair, and correctly use products to get maximum bang for your buck. Here in the UK, we are quickly approaching winter, so it seems like a logical place to start with this series, talking about moisturizers. We're then gonna move backwards in our skincare routine, looking at mistakes that each step might entail. So hopefully, by the end of this series, we all know how to use our products for maximum effect. Sit back, relax, let's talk some common moisturizer mistakes. Now, before we get into this video, let's just say loud and clear. We might be talking about mistakes that I've certainly made and some people might continue to make, but there is zero judgment here. This is all about sharing my own mistakes so that you guys can learn from them. But if you've made these mistakes yourself or you continue to do so, like I say, this is a judgment-free space and I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Have you been guilty of any of these mistakes in the past? Sound off so that people out there know that they're not alone. Like I say, Skincare is a journey, one that I think we are proudly going on together. And my purpose in this video isn't to pass any judgment, it's just to share my own experiences to hopefully make your skincare journey that little bit easier. I'd also love to know what your thoughts are on this series. If it's something that you want to see for each step of the skincare routine, then let me know by reaching down and giving the video a big thumbs up and a like. This really does support me as a content creator. and I do look at the likes profile of each and every video. The more likes a video gets, the more likely I am to replicate that content in the future because I always want to create things that you guys most enjoy watching. Now, I've got a lot to get through in today's video, so I think it's time we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in. So kicking things off straight away with mistake number one when it comes to moisturizers, overpaying. I have, oh, been guilty of this so many times over in the past. The idea that by paying more, you're going to get more doesn't apply in skincare. So let's just dispel that myth straight away, especially when it comes to moisturizers. Now, I think some of the best moisturizers are the simplistic ones. And if something is fairly simple in terms of its formulation, I don't want to be paying top dollar for it. And I don't think you need to. Moisturizers come at the end of a skincare routine. They kind of lock everything in, seal all that good skincare you've already put on the skin and add a little extra hydration. You don't really want them to be packed full of actives or, you know, superstar ingredients. That should already have been applied with the serums and the creams that you put on beforehand. Your moisturizer just finishes everything off, so don't overpay. There are so many amazing affordable options on the market. I just don't want anyone bursting their budget on a moisturizer. One of my personal favorites is this. This is the Transparent Lab Urea Face Cream. This is like six pounds. One of the best moisturizers I've ever used. And like I say, super budget friendly. When I created my own moisturizer for my skincare collection, this is the Mad About Skin Maximum Impact Moisturizer. And this again, comes in that affordable price point that allows you to get that hydration you need, lock everything in without the La Mer price point. So yeah, mistake number one is overpaying, believing you're gonna get more. You don't. Honestly, when it comes to moisturizers, keep it affordable, keep it drugstore, because that, I think, is where you'll allow your budget to then invest in the other steps of your routine. Now, the second mistake I think people make is not moisturizing for their environment or for the seasons. I think a lot of people will pick a moisturizer up off the shelf based on their skin type. If you're dryness prone, you're gonna go for something thicker, more occlusive. If like me, you're super oily, you're gonna go for something much more lightweight. And that generally works. However, the seasons change and our skin type will change and our skin's needs will change. So what I would say is kind of change your theory on that. Instead of moisturizing based on your skin type, Moisturize based on what your skin needs in that moment. So, for example, all summer long, I have been a grease slick. My grease levels go into overdrive in the warmer summer months. So I've been reaching for something super lightweight. One of my go-tos has been this. This is a Face Theory Super Gel Oil Free Moisturizer. An absolute holy grail for oily folk during those warmer summer months. And this, like everything mentioned, by the way, is linked in the description box below if you wanted to check it out for yourself. This. 
amazing. However, as the weather has started to turn a little cooler here in the UK, I started to notice my skin needs a little bit more, a little bit more hydration than what can be provided by that face area one, which is why I've then switched it up to my own moisturizer, the Mad About Skin one, which gives me just a little extra moisture that my skin needs in that moment. As soon as things start to warm up again, I'll switch back. And I'd recommend everyone do that. Moisturize based on the seasonality and what your skin needs, rather than what your preconceived notion is when it comes to skin type. Now, mistake number three, I've actually made some notes for this video. I hope you guys are proud. I actually made some notes. Normally I just wing it, but I, I feel so passionately about these mistakes that I've definitely made in the past. I thought I'm gonna make some notes. Mistake number three is with a term non-comediogenic. Now, this is a term you often hear thrown about in skincare, and I often get asked a lot on the videos I produce, is X product non-comediogenic? Now, this is taken to mean won't clog the pores, but honestly, this term is pretty meaningless, and that's because everyone's skin is unique. So someone like myself that's super breakout prone, really prone to blackheads, will find Vaseline really like the most pore clogging ingredient that I have ever applied. However, loads of people will shout and say, well, Vaseline is non-comedogenic, so it can't clog your pores. Well, it can. Based on my experience, let me tell you, it can, but not for everyone. And that's just one example of how, what a product will do for one person, it won't necessarily do for another. So I'm saying, don't just fixate on that non-comedogenic label on a product. If you're super oily and breakout prone, test the waters. Try different products to see which ones work for you, because just relying on that label, honestly, is probably gonna set you up for failure. Take it from me as someone that's used many non-comedogenic products over the year and they have broke me out something wild. It, it doesn't always translate. Our skin's unique like we are and we should treat it like that. Now, mistake number four is thinking that you have to use a moisturizer. So for those of us that are super oily and acne prone like me, you might not need to use a moisturizer every day. People that have combination skin might be able to get their hydration from other aspects of their skincare routine. So I would say just Take a pause at the end of your routine before you put your moisturizer on. Listen to your skin and say, do I actually need some extra moisture? If you do, apply a moisturizer. If you don't, then honestly, you can just skip it and know that you've got that dose of hydration from your other steps. That really applies to morning skincare routine. I think most people out there will require a moisturizer in the evening because we're using harsher actives, usually retinoids, and a moisturizer will definitely help. But on a morning, I'd say assess what your skin needs. Don't feel that you have to reach for a moisturizer just because you've almost been conditioned to believe you do. A great example is one of my favorite sunscreens is this. This is the K-Secret Collagen Boosting Secret Sun Lotion. This this is hydrating enough that if I use this on a morning, I definitely don't need a moisturizer. My skin just doesn't need that level of hydration. This works. And so you can save yourself a step, save yourself some of your coin and prevent the skin feeling weighed down. Take a look at the end of your routine before you put your moisturizer on. And work out, do I actually need one? Now, finally, let's talk about actives in moisturizers. And I think the mistake that a lot of people make is not knowing what's actually in their moisturizers. Most of us will just pick one up at the drugstore, slap it on our skin and think we're good to go. But read the instructions, read the ingredients and know what's in there. For example, this I referenced earlier, the Face Theory Super Gel Moisturizer. Absolutely phenomenal when it comes to oily and acne prone skin, but it actually contains niacinamide and salicylic acid. So I don't need to be using a salicylic acid or a niacinamide serum alongside this. It's already in the moisturizer. If I wasn't aware of that and I use this alongside a salicylic acid, potentially I could trigger a lot of sensitivity and irritation. So I'd say, do your skin a favor. Read the ingredients of your um, moisturizer and know exactly what's in there. If you're in any doubt or confusion, there's a gorgeous little website called the Inky Decoder, which I'll link below, which is completely independent. You can put the ingredients in there, like cut and paste them from a brand's website, put them in there, and they'll tell you what each ingredient does. So you kind of know exactly what's in your moisturizer and you can prevent any irritation. One of my personal favorites, and I wanna end on a high. You know, I feel like we've talked about mistakes in this video and it's been a whistle-stop tour, but I wanna end on a high. One of my absolute favorite moisturizers is this. This is the Alisa Skin Molecular barrier recovery cream balm. So this is like the best ultimate moisturizer if you're looking for something that'll get rid of your sensitivity, irritation, dry skin. If you want it all just solved, use this.
However, if you read the instructions on this, what the brand clearly state is this is designed to take your skin into repair mode. And so actually you don't want to use a lot of actives alongside this, cleanse the skin, and then use this for a couple of nights consecutively in order to repair the skin and boost the barrier function. That, that's when this works best. You should be using it alongside lots of other high potency actives. It defeats the object. And so I'd say know what's in your moisturizer, no, read the instructions, which I'm certainly guilty of skipping a lot of the time, and know what the brand recommends, because that way, ultimately, you're going to get the very best experience for your skin. Hopefully, in this video, whilst it's been a hard breath, it's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour. I've been able to share with you four common mistakes that we all make when it comes to moisturizers, and hopefully, you can learn from my mistakes to get the very best when it comes to your skincare routine. Let me know which step of the routine you want me to tackle with this series next in the comments section below, wherever you are in the world, guys. Stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.